Welcome. My name is Theresa Booth. Today we are here to talk about the safe administration of medication. Medication administration learning outcomes for today are to understand the importance of practicing safe administration of medication, the importance of following legislation surrounding medication, to understand the need to follow your organisation's policies and procedures in relation to medication, to realise the importance of maintaining an individual's privacy, dignity and independence, and the importance of gaining consent from the individual at all times. By the end of this video, you will know the role you play in administrating medication and be aware of your boundaries when assisting with medication. The last learning outcome is to understand the types of medication available and the possible routes they may be given. So we're going to look a little bit about legislation and medication. Refusal of medication. Everyone has the right to refuse medication. However, if this is a regular occurrence, we need help from healthcare professionals as some medication are life-sustaining where others may just be taking away pain. So we need advice as to when refusal, we need help with refusal. Use of medication compliance aids. Compliance aids come, are filled by individual family or friends. They do not come with a pharmacy label. Under no circumstances are we to administer medication from a medication compliance aid. We do not know what's in them and we could be given the individual medication that hasn't been prescribed for them. Roles and responsibilities. It's the manager's responsibility to ensure that an individual has a GP. There should be safe policies and procedures in place and it is the manager's responsibility to ensure all staff are trained. Social, social workers carry out that first initial assessment and gain written consent for medication to be administered. Care staff give out the medication, make sure the individual takes them and records the giving and taking of the medication on the medication administration record sheets. Storage of medication. On the pharmacy label, there will be instructions as to store, how to store medication. It could include do not store in a cold place or store a capsule in its carton at room temperature in a dry place but out of strong sunlight and some medications need to be stored in a fridge. Storage of medication. The storage area should be cool, clean and dry. Medicines used internally must be stored away from those used externally. This is to prevent cross-contamination. The oldest stock should be used first and never be tempted to mix new with old. Controlled drugs. The storage of controlled drugs is a regulated thing. We have to make sure that controlled drugs are behind two locks. So it could be a storage area that has a compartment inside a compartment. If you do not have a storage that is suitable, then it should be lock a locked door and a storage cabinet that can be locked. We have five rights to medication, but we've included an extra, which is plus one consent and right to refuse. So the five rights for medication are the right dose of the right medication to the right person at the right time via the right route. There are lots of different types of medication. Antibiotics, these are for infections. Analgesics, these are for painkillers. Antihistamines for allergies. Antacids, which are for acid reflux and indigestion. Anticoagulants, which are blood thinners. Psychotropic medication, which are used to treat things like depression or psychosis. Diuretics are for patients who have water retention. Laxatives are for constipation. 
There are several different types of hormone, but some common ones you may know may be insulin or thyroxine. And cytotoxic medicines are for cancer treatment. The different routes where medication can be taken, inhalation, which means through the mouth or nose, injection, which is pierce, piercing the skin with a needle, you are not allowed to carry out that task. That is the task of a healthcare professional. Ingestion, which is oral, so anything that goes in the mouth. Topical, which can be creams or patches that go on top of your skin. Infusion is via a drip. Installation applies to eye drops, ear drops and nasal sprays. Again, infusion and installation are not activities that you are allowed to do. Healthcare professionals must do that. Per rectum means inserted into the rectum. Again, healthcare professionals should be carrying out that task. And per vagina, again, healthcare professionals um, will be doing that task. As and when required medication, you must ensure accurate dosage and directions are received from a GP and ensure that the maximum dosage is stated no more than four hours in 24 hour period could be an example. Ensure that it is stated as required the med what the medication is for. Ensure that the frequency and the appropriate time for administering the medication are stated, for example every four hours with food. Check there are any contraindicators. I will be talking about contraindicators in this video. Assessing pain when an individual lacks capacity. You may be working with someone who has dementia and is regularly refusing to take medication. If this is the case, discuss with a healthcare professional who may decide to change it from as and when required to four times a day. Blood sugar monitoring. Where an individual requires blood sugar monitoring, this should only be carried out by healthcare professionals, not care staff. Eye drops, ear drops and nasal sprays are the responsibility of a healthcare professional and can only be administered if you have had appropriate training and been signed off as being competent to do so. Specialist training. Warfarin is usually a healthcare professional to administer insulin because it's given via a needle again is a healthcare professional's role. Rectal diazepam and buccal midazolam you can have specialist training for but you have to pass and be signed off as competent to be able to do that. Nitroglycerin sublingual is an oral medication that goes under the tongue applying patches. Ensure you read the instructions on the box. Some patches will say remove the patch that's in situ before placing a new patch. This is because the patch can still be activated while you're putting the second patch on and can overdose. The use of inhalers. Inhalers must have a spacer. Care staff are not allowed to administer any inhalers unless they use the spacer provided. Contraindicators. Contraindicators are substances that can affect the person that are taking certain medications. These can include cranberry and cranberry juice, raspberries and raspberry juice, if someone is on warfarin. If someone is taking statins, then they should avoid grapefruit or grapefruit juice. And if anyone is suffering with asthma, they should avoid ibuprofen. For other contraindicators, check the pharmacy label and the instructions inside the box. Reporting and seeking advice. So if someone has allergic reaction to any medication that you might give, it's important that you get a healthcare professional's perspective. Some reactions are far more severe than others. We need to follow the instructions given by a healthcare professional.
Errors in administration. Most errors occur in the morning. It can be after a change of routine when transcribing from the pharmacy label to a medication administration sheet and when carers are rushed or distracted. All errors should be reported to your manager so that an error log can be made. Disposal of medication. Under no circumstances should medication be flushed down the toilet. A medication disposal sheet should be filled in, signed, dated, taken to the pharmacist who will sign to say they've received the medication and will dis denature them appropriately. Thank you for watching this video.